Hello and welcome to Steve's Fortune Fabs video on a 8th 9th century Viking axe build. Here we are looking for what style we're looking for and started leaning towards the type 3 8th to 9th century style axe. I made up a quick drawing and went away from the traditional handle with something a little more curvy with leather wrap top and bottom made the main axe head out of beach found wrought iron chain old logging chain it's about seven pounds of it roughly we're going to cut that up into pieces and uh, there's the pieces cut up and then we're going to throw those into the forge and uh, get them straight and flat all right so this marks the start of marcus and barb's project we're going to take some old chain and some new fancy Damascus and we're going to make a cool little weapon. Axe. Let the fun times begin. All right, get them into the forge. Get them red hot. Use the press and the anvil to straighten and flatten them as best as I can. We'll do that with all of the pieces and then we go to the grinder to clean them up get all the forging scale and slag off of there so that when we put them into the can they will weld together nicely we don't want any inclusion and when they're done getting cleaned up we put them into some acetone to make it uh, Nice and clean. And we're going to put those into that can. It's painted white so that the can won't stick to the stuff inside. We're going to weld up the can for the canister. If we bought real estate 35 years ago, we wouldn't have this $100,000 collection of mini babies. point now where we're going to try to forge weld this thing together. Uh, yeah, it's exciting. So the forge is getting hot. And here's the canister. It is full of this chain and some 1084 powder. It's heavy. It's probably, oh, I don't know. It's got to be 10 pounds at least. Meanwhile, now we get ready for the other billet for the cutting edge. Uh, several layers of 1084 and 15N20. We tack weld those together, put them in the fire, get them hot, weld them together, and uh, that's kind of what it looks like when it comes out. Weld it together. I'll clean that up, make sure there's no inclusions, and it'll get drawn out afterwards. A few moments later, now we're back at the uh, Forge welding the initial billet, the uh, axe head together. It's just more of the same heat, beat, and repeat. Use the press and the anvil to try to solidify that hunk of steel into one. And then we'll take the can off. There's the can after it's been forge welded together. And now it's time to get the can off. Hey! That's cool. Oh, that's cool. You can see it. I'm talking about uh, different steels in there. How you can see them forming together. Pretty cool.
We can try, why don't we do this first? Let's try this first. Oh yeah, it's coming right off, yes. That's what we want to see. Get that can off of there and show the inside of all that good stuff in there. Yeah. And it looks Isn't this fun? Oh, this is so satisfying for me. every time I can tell you that and that's pretty cool and there is what's left that is going to become your axe far out man yeah I'm happy with that Woohoo! all right here we have the axe starting to take a little bit of shape starting to shape it a little bit and there's the other billet drawn out into a bar that is then cut into rounded and cut into three pieces and then twisted in opposite directions to make the Turkish twist the squared up now and then those get uh, flattened and attached to some other pieces of steel put them into the vise there I'm going to attack weld those together and then put them into the fire to forge weld those together to create that Turkish twist um, blade on the uh, cutting edge of the, of the axe. All right, and again, more of the same, back and forth, heat, beat, repeat. I'm grinding a little bit there to make sure that uh, the steel is good, making sure that uh, there's no inclusions. Yeah, lots of, oh, and then we put it into some vermiculite for the night. And uh, what that does is um, it helps anneal the steel. So I put it in that vermiculite overnight. And then we start drifting the hole into the axe head for the handle. Three days later. Continuing to drift the hole into the main axe head uh, proved difficult and started to come apart a little bit. A little bit of weld fixed that up though real quick and we were able to move on.
Just moving forward, trying to shape the axe by hand on the anvil and on the horn. Continuing to compare it with the drawing to try to achieve the correct shape. So if everything goes to plan, this will be the cutting edge of uh, the axe. For the Victoria Whiskey Festival, the cans are tasting. At this point, I am getting the two pieces, the cutting edge and the axe head, ready to forge weld them together. In doing so, I'll be trimming off a large piece of the axe where the cutting edge is. I'll put a groove where the edge is and then put the blade part into that groove, tack weld it, and then forge weld it together. Unfortunately, I was not able to capture that on video. Now we move on to the quenching and heat treating of the blade. This last trip to the press is just putting my maker's mark into the blade. The axe is then heated and cooled over several cycles to normalize and anneal the blade in preparation for quench and tempering. So we say a prayer to the quench gods, the Viking gods, please give this axe life so that it may serve others. Brother. This quench hardens the cutting edge of the axe while the remainder of the axe head remains uh, unhardened and uh, milder like steel. To make sure it didn't warp or anything. Next step is to put it into the toaster oven, 400 degrees for an hour at a time for two cycles. And that'll take some of the hardness out of the blade. And uh, it, that's the tempering, they call that tempering. Anyway, there you go. Start the timer. Meanwhile. Time to move on to the ax handle, made out of hickory. I'm gonna try to refine it a little bit. Some curves in there the leather hand stitch wrap on the top and bottom. <clears throat> Moving on to uh, sharpening the edge, uh, it'll end up with a forged finish and a sharpened polished cutting edge. Going through the different uh, grits of sandpaper from hard to fine and then we're going to put it into a bath of ferric chloride and distilled water. Okay. So this is one of my favorite parts of the, any project that I do make Damascus is uh, it's sitting in ferric chloride and distilled water right now. And it's, uh, it's etching uh, the steel on the blade of the ax head. And we're going to reveal the pattern that, uh, that I created for the edge, which is called Turkish twist. It's my first attempt at it. And uh, here we go. This is the big moment of truth. This is the first, and it'll go back in the solution here in a minute. Here we go. Ooh, look at that. That's pretty cool. Right on. So it goes, uh, I'll put it back in the bath now and let it sit for another few minutes. And then I'll uh, sand it with a thousand grit sandpaper and do the, uh, etching a few more times to try to make it really pop. Woohoo! Okay, reaching the end of the build, we've got a polished hammer head and a polished cutting edge. Now we move on to the sheath. Took me a couple of times to get that right. And then uh, put it all together and you have the finished product. An eighth or ninth century Viking ax in my style. Turkish twist Damascus on the cutting edge with uh, wrought iron chain and 1084 powder as the main head. Thanks for watching. <laughs>